R2. So for today, basically your assignment is going to be to uh, deploy a uh, DRF application with Postgres to AWS. We can reference week 11 day four where we deployed AWS and we'll uh, we'll just try this out. So I have created an AWS account. I have logged into it. Uh, I thought I deleted you, sir. Okay, cool. Let's bring him over here. So I'm on AWS. I've gone to my EC2 instances, but just to show that uh, it'll show my recently visited if you don't find it. Uh, oops. You can find EC2 here. Virtual cloud servers. Sounds good to me. That's what I want. Man, why is. Internet's running bad. What? Oh, come on. If I start sounding like a robot, you'll let me know. All right. You do keep cutting out. Hmm. Let me try something real fast. Uh oh. Sometimes. When I open my laptop, it makes everything better. Yeah, I mean, I'm running at like 360 megabits a second. I should be all right. All right. So we're looking at the EC2 page. You might think, wow, that's like a whole lot of uh, junk. What a crowded UI. I agree. Uh, and if none of you think that, you should think that because this is hard to look at for me personally. Um, but there is a way to interact with the, the command line, AWS CLI, where you can do basically anything you can do on here from the command line. Might be harder to remember that way, but... You only have to uh, do the commands that you need. Those are easy to look up and you can, you know, script it out. So rather than launch an instance and go through all the different steps that we're going to do now, I could write up a script that would just do all we're doing right now. But some people like UIs. We need to launch a server. Let's do that. Uh, well, launch an instance. I'm going to create an instance called uh, Wine API. Amazon Linux sounds good to me. Linux is the best OS. Architecture 64. Yep, sounds good. I need a key pair name. I already have one. Oh, I deleted it. Great. Let's create a new one. RSA.pem sounds good to me. We're going to be SSHing into this thing occurs to me that I don't know what SSH stands for, yet I use that term on a daily basis. Um, secure shell protocol. It's basically remote logging into another machine. Via the terminal, I'm logging into another machine and treating it like it's now my machine. That's all we're doing. If we want to connect via SSH, we either have to have a user name and password, or we can have a key, a key pair. Uh, says, hey, you've got the key to my key, you're, you're welcome to. All we're gonna have to do is provide this key uh, to this client and it'll let us in, hopefully. So create key pair, oh, it uh, doesn't matter, uh, my key. Where is that? Uh, it's in my downloads. So something you should never do, but I'm gonna do it anyways. There it is. I'm gonna just grab it and move it.
right here. This is super duper secret. You shouldn't share this. You should never look at this. Don't memorize this. Well, it doesn't really matter. It's just a way to get into uh, my API that I'm gonna be serving here on AWS. This is a quick way to get this done. There are many, many solutions for doing this in a more secure manner. Um, don't worry about it too, too much. Probably the easiest, peasiest way to do this is to save this script as text uh, into your environment. That way there's not a physical file you can go look at. It's just running in the environment. Um, I could probably accomplish that with something like uh, uh, I, I don't want to get I could probably export it as uh, SSH key. This is just setting a variable and then it could be like the output of cat uh, my key something like that and then we would just save the text version of this as a file that exists ephemerally in the environment um doesn't really matter uh we're just using this now to ssh um into this so i'm not going to commit this this doesn't need to go to github let's go ahead and make sure that's Get ignore. Oh, I don't have a get ignore in here, do I? Oh, wait. Get ignore. Thank you. Um, and we'll just put the name of this. Sounds good to me. Okay. Continuing. Uh, choose the T2 micro free tier. I think that's what we did. Uh, under allow SSH traffic, choose my IP. Also select I'll allow HTTP traffic from the internet. My IP. Yeah, sure. Uh, we could lock it down to just say all can hit it, but we're just going to lock it down to us. Um, Seems good. I mean, it doesn't really make sense. Whatever. All right, let's launch this instance. So I know I glanced over that a little bit. We're allowing SSH traffic from me specifically. And then we're allowing HTTP traffic from the internet. So I don't want anyone SSHing into this, even if they had the key. So it has to come from mine, um, my IP. So steal my key all you want, it don't matter. Let's launch this instance. Great. Maybe we go view this instance, huh? Here it is. Look at that. Real not even information overload. This is makes this is great to look at. Some things I care about. Here's my public IPv for address. This is how I'm going to get to this thing. Um, what's my instance state? It should be up and running. Uh, I think I can open this now. I think it probably isn't going to do anything because I'm not serving anything, but that's how we would get in. Let's stay on task. Yeah. Okay. Fig update. Right now, your front end, nope, that's not true. Uh, we are going to be using 8,000. So once everything is up on AWS, we need to uh, do a couple things. Let's get the EC2 instance public IPv4 address and update your code, replacing localhost with that. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different because we're going to have to uh, set our allowed hosts to uh, us, I believe. Oh, wait, no, 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 that's not right. Um, shoot, where did it go? Okay, it's in security, goodness gracious. Ooh. This is where it deviates a little bit. So in the security settings here, uh, we are going to allow that 8,000 port to be viewed. 
goodness gracious, where is the create button? I think you have to go into the security group there. Oh, that? Yeah, that makes sense. That it? Manage? I could have swore I just, there was a create a new one button here. Yeah, I'm sure it's coming in here. Click on security groups link. That's what we did. Click to edit the inbound 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 rules and then click add rule so inbound rules edit it's on the right hand side yuck like up a little bit oh my god okay. right there yeah i don't like you guys y'all so it's gonna be a tcp connection we're gonna set it to eight thousand because that's what we're running on uh, custom TCP. We're going to set this to all traffic. Ought to be it. Ought to be it. Uh, I think it defaults to zero, 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 zero. We'll just make sure. Save rules. Good. Configuring the server. Our server ought to be up and running, I believe. Um, So let's do that. All right, from the detail view or EC2 instance, click the connect and then SSH client. Let's go to our EC2 instance. Uh, I don't, like this should be running. I don't like that we got a button here. Um, it doesn't seem like it's running though because the instance isn't running. Didn't I already do this. Y'all, where's my instance that I started? You watch me do that, right? I'm not crazy. It might be in a different region in the top right. If you click Ohio, it might change it. Because I've had that happen before. Well, then where would it have gone? Maybe here? Heck no, not there either. I mean, I guess I'll, I'll do it again. That's... This is new to me. I'm pretty sure it is running though. So if you if you click on instances beneath instances on the left, there you go. Uh, that says click on, zero. <laughs> click on instance ID and then you should be able to click connect. Did that right. not say zero? Am I crazy? Was I making that up? Did it not say zero instances? It did. It's it's recorded. Don't lie. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, so let's connect to it. SSH client. It'll probably default to this for you. SSH client. Um, this is basically telling us we do need to chmod this key to make it 400, um, but then we can use that key to connect here. It makes it real easy because I did tell it which key we were going to use. So let's copy that. Uh, make sure we, earlier I was saying 400. I don't think 400 was what I wanted. No, oh, it was fine. Okay, so still have our key in here. Again, this is this is here in this repo for convenience sake. It doesn't, it's in the getting door. It doesn't technically exist in the repo. I'm just keeping this key here for convenience sake. It should go somewhere else. Dunzo. Let's paste this here. Um Yeah, this would be good. Sure. Ooh, we're in. That's what a brand new, fresh uh, Linux server looks like when hosted on AWS. So we're in. Next, we got to do a few things to install them on your server. Basically, we got a lot of stuff we need. This doesn't have uh, yum is one of the many ways to install on Linux machines. There's also like APT and honestly, Homebrew works on Linux as well. And I would highly suggest doing that when possible. Uh, but for now, let's get, get Docker, uh, Docker Compose, 
all on this machine. So we're basically going to copy this. It's going to run it line by line. And installed. That doesn't take too long. What we're going to do next is we're going to clone our repo directly into the EC2 instance. This is not an easy, great deploy pipeline here. Um, I would like to see something a little bit easier, more replicatable, something that doesn't require me to literally log on to an instance, pull it in. Uh, I would like to deploy the image to the instance, but that's that's later down the pipeline. Right now, baby steps, we're gonna do something that's easy to follow that we already kind of understand. So I'm on this instance right now. What I would like to do is get pull um, everything I've got here. So let's open up another terminal. Let's slide this out of the way. Hit status. Look at all that. And just make sure I'm on the one I think I'm on. Yep. Jordan West, DRF. So I am on my fork. Let's get add. Get commit. Uh, first commit. Well, that's a bad one. Let's use some smart coding uh, words here. Uh, feet um, application set for deploy, which is also not a great one, but it's a little bit better. Get push origin name. Also known as GPOM. So this should all be up and deployed, or sorry, not deployed, uh, pushed to my GitHub. <laughs> there it is. It says it's private. That's fine. Uh, we're going to log into it. Code. I'm going to do HTTPS. I could use SSH. Do y'all have SSH keys set up, or do y'all always use this? Somebody. I always use HTTPS. Sick. SSH key is better. <laughs> um, really easy to set up. Maybe I can show you how to do that during class, during after the lecture today. This is just an easy way. It'll never require you to input a password ever. As long as that key exists on your machine, and your machine knows about it, you can connect to anything that your GitHub profile has access to. But I don't have that key on this uh, server, so we're going to HTTP into it. Copy, clone. Um, all right, that's done for right now. Let's get clone all that. It's going to want my username, which takes my email. It then wants a password. This is not my password that I use to log into GitHub. This is my personal access token that I have set up that I think will last for 30 days. Not preferable to an SSH key. I'd rather have an SSH key deployed with this thing. In fact, that's something we could also do is add an SSH key uh, to the deploy of this so it's you know already there and available. If you don't know how to set up a PAT token, we can cover that after the lecture as well. But check it out. I'm on my EC2 instance. Look at that. It's all here. We, I think, have hit the usefulness of this. So uh, let's just see what happens. Let's try and run this. Um, I think we're going to hit a few bumps along the way, but ideally, <laughs> we didn't even test this locally, did we? Let's verify this runs locally before we break our hearts uh, on the EC2 instance. Test things locally before you start breaking it or never test it locally. And only, you know, there, there's two different ways to go about this. I think it's probably smart as an instructor to show you that this runs locally before pushing it up so we don't all just get lost and you don't have to just believe everything I say. But personally, I don't care if it runs locally, if this is where it ends up, right? Locally is just faster feedback loop on issues. If it's broken locally, very easy for me to fix it, fix, you know, push it up or not push it up, but redeploy it locally. But that's 
as you'll see, that's, uh, you know, not really indicative of what it's going to do when deployed. While the deployment path is slow right now, right, every time I make a change, I have to add it, commit it, push it, go back to my EC2 instance, pull it down, stop the service, start the service, and see issues. That seems painful. That really slows down your ability to see whether issues, you know, arise or not. But that's why there's faster ways to deploy, right? Th that's why I said this is a bad deploy, you know, pipeline. I would rather get push triggers an action, triggers a webhook, triggers something that handles all that, deploys it, and then starts it up on the instance. So really all I would have to do is work locally, push it, and then I would have a web page up and showing it real time as it's taking on those changes. That would significantly shorten the process. Still not as fast as local, but it's just more indicative of where it's actually going. Who cares that you you get a you get a badge uh, in my line of work, if you say this term and it's a little metal and I've said it before, it's, it's it works on my machine. It's like, well, great. That doesn't, that's not good for anybody else. It needs to, it needs to work where it belongs. Right. Um, enough of that. Let's see if this is working as intended. So it sure looks like it is. Um, That is two containers up running. 16 hours? That can't be right. Let's let's stop that. You'll want to guess the last time I looked at this lecture? It was 16 hours ago. Okay, let's see if we can actually hit this thing. Uh, uh... Oh, yep. Hey, look at that. I don't want to do admin. Wines. I know it looks ugly, but this is what it's supposed to look like. Here's our Django REST framework uh, showing us you know, this is this is what it looks like. This is the app. So we verified we can hit that. I'm actually going to use. Uh, I'm not the, the. I don't like Postman. Sorry if that Jack Shell's life all up. Um, I'm going to use Insomnia. It just a little bit easier UI. Uh, did I not send it to the right thing? Query winds at one. Oh, you can't get it there. Uh, so just to show it. Um, like we said, if we send a wine, and this is what it has to look like, and it would tell us that if we, you know, did this incorrectly. In fact, you know what? Let me just do this incorrectly. Let me get rid of something and try to send it there. Oh, description. Look at this. So I, I, I tried to post this JSON object to local post 8,000 wines, and uh, look at that. This field is required. That's super helpful. That tells us exactly what we need. In fact, if we sent nothing, it would tell us all the fields that are required. This isn't insomnia. This is Django handling, you know, this. Description. Uh, good. I called this wine Fox Rot. Be like, I don't know, rock good wine, white rock good whiskey, and your foxtrot. I thought it was clever last night. Posted foxtrot saved, so or foxtrot saved. That means this should realistically be here. Look at that. So we now have one wines. It is that fox rot wine, the red 100. It's pretty good. This server is up and running. Do we agree? Let's now do the same thing on our EC2 instance. Get that out of the way. Ignore this. Works on my machine. Good job. Run. This might go a little bit slower on this machine. They don't. They don't like doling out hot, nasty Linux boxes. They give you 
garbage. So, Hell Divers Two, we all playing it. Should be. No time for games. Oh, come on. Yeah, that's fair. I've been many points in my life where I just didn't play games anymore. Uh, but life slowed down, and now I can game again. Very exciting. July. Can't wait. <laughs> I still haven't beat Baldur's Gate 3. I haven't either, and I've got like 300 hours in it. I don't beat games I love. I just keep starting over, and I want to try it again, and I... It was like, you haven't beat it? I'm like, yeah, I didn't beat Baldur's Gate. I didn't beat Divinity 2. Uh, it took me forever to beat Darkest Dungeon. All these games can be beaten in like 40 hours. Um, I don't know. I don't beat them. <laughs> Let's get back on the uh, topic. People watching this YouTube video are not going to appreciate our banter. All right. Looks to me like this all started up as expected. Dr. P.S. Running on... Green Unicorn, Force 8000, 5.32 CP, looks right to me. Uh, I will point out potential issues. I don't like when the lecture goes just perfectly right because I can't fix anything. What could happen here in this Compose? We built this line here to do our migrations. If I had changed the name of my directory for any reason, this would be wrong and I would need to update that. So just keep that in mind. That can happen. The issue you'll see when uh, you run your Docker Compose is going to say something like, this container does not exist. Uh, and you just need to look. You know, And, and I almost did that. And I, and I kind of was like, ah, shoot, I should refork it. I was going to change this to just Wine API. And so, because that sounds better to me than DRF Wine API. And, and in that case, our run Compose would need to reflect that. And not because anything to do with Compose itself. It's just that our script here is referencing what we expect Docker Compose to name the container. So this looks like it's working to me. Um, let's see what's going on with it. So our EC2 instance here has a public IPv4 address. I'm going to copy that, go to my insomnia here, and replace localhost with that. Uh, do a regular old get request. Send. Oh, no! Disallowed host at Wines. Have y'all seen this before with Django? Maybe not, but we're smart people, right? Matt Lachey, you've seen uh, this before, right? Maybe this all capital snake case, screaming snake case, as they call it. Where have you seen that in a Django file before? Is it in settings? Yeah, dude. It's uh, So this is an environment variable. Generally, all capitals are environment variables. In Python, constants are also all capital by convention. They don't have to be. That doesn't say settings. Um, so look at that. That's easy peasy. We can guess. I don't need all this anymore. We can kind of make an assumption without knowing anything about Django. Invalid HTTP host header. This. You may need to add this to allow hosts. I'm guessing that probably lines up with, yeah, that's it. We're just telling Django, hey, yo, don't worry about it. This is an okay place to be hosted from. You could 
uh, probably get away with the same uh, that say like, yeah, you run anywhere, whatever. I think this is a silly thing, but this is a Django thing. There's probably good reasons for setting that that aren't coming straight to my head. So now it should work, right? What do we need to do? Katya, what do I need to do to get this into AWS? Would you have to run migrations within the um, the AWS again? We didn't change the database. We don't need to run a migration. Mm -hmm. We simply made a change locally. I am local to that file. How do we get that file in AWS? How did we get it there in the first place? Do you recall? I don't recall. We just get cloned it, right? I just cloned that repository into the AWS uh, EC2 instance. So if I want to pull in changes that I did locally, all I need to do is get at it, get commit, uh, update. It's just for me. It doesn't matter what I commit here. Um, get push origin main. So we've pushed this up into GitHub. Now on the EC2 instance, we're not going to clone it again. Um, we're just going to get full. Use my pat token that I've definitely not saved in Slack. Yeah, check it out. I have a question. Two, yes. Uh, with the loud host, when you uh, set up an actual domain and you, I guess the question is, do you set the new URL that you choose in do, in a loud host? Um, buy well, so I, you know, I'm not positive. I personally imagine unless it's a dynamic IP and it's changing that it would still be fine to use the IP because gotcha. okay. otherwise, I mean, it's just a DNS change. It's, it's just an alias of that URL pointed yeah. at an IP. As long as that IP is static, then the IP should be fine. If the IP is not static, I think that probably works. So maybe the answer is probably yes. Maybe, uh, if I did pay for a domain, I should put that domain name here. And then whether the IP ever changes, it's 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 gonna be mine. So wine settings would up by be, oh what's up? Would it be wise to have the IP and comma separate the URL as well? Or is mm, that just yeah. for uh IPs? You saying like this? And then my website. W -W. Yeah, yeah. My my West site, Jordan West. <laughs> um, I think you'd want one or the other. I don't know that I would. Okay. I don't. I don't know a reason why I'd put both. Not that. Yeah, if you can come up with a reason for why, maybe. Uh, maybe. Um, I think you got an option of allowed host because perhaps this is a you know assuming, and I think the answer is definitely yes on this, but you've got something up in a cluster with multiple multiple ingress points, multiple different servers all serving instances. So you'd be able to add them all here. Um, but yeah, I would probably just do IP or the URL. Um, what changed? Git log. <laughs> uh, Shorty West side update allowed hosts for EC2 instance. I don't know where that's coming from. Um, Get diff. Ah, why is get diff not working the way I want it to on this? Anyhow, we did pull in the allowed host for EC2 instance change. I can just real quick um, verify that. 
by using handy dandy vim checking out allowed hosts looks good to me all right so that's in there are we good now tim yes Whoa. gotcha But it's there. Why is why are we still getting this? The files in the computer. These have still been running for nine minutes, though. Yeah. Old stuff yeah, still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all around, dude. Let's get my right file first. Stop. Run. Just the way I am. How about restart compose? Eh? How about that? Y'all like that better? Now we have a single file to run. If I run restart compose, it Docker compose down, Docker compose up, runs all this. I like that more. Are you also able to just add the add the git commands to this as well? If you're just trying yeah, to sure. Yeah, for sure. I definitely could. Do it all uh, in one trigger. Uh mm, yeah, but I guess the commit message would be messed up, but you want it here. This so all this is doing is restarting compose. I don't know how the git commands. Oh, you mean like? I mean like saying... upon every commit, it automatically it automatically retriggers a reload. Um, that's assuming. You would have to be doing that on the EC2 host to get that to trigger. Uh, otherwise, we're going to have to set a webhook. Something that watches GitHub, sees a change, and then performs some action. Uh, this, I have to run manually, right? So I don't have a way right now to perform the Git pull. What I could do... Right, yep is probably get pull um but i still have to push this up so there's not really uh, well yeah i mean it still works so i could save myself the the get pull line here maybe right um i don't want to mix those up too too much but you're you're thinking you're going in the right direction on that i i very much would like to you know set up a github action that says on pull request merge or anything on push to main uh ssh into here log on do a git pull run all this and then back out uh, we could do that we could super do that we don't need to run it from the ec2 instance but we could <laughs> Hop onto this bad boy and then um, start like a new file here and then run all of these and then end it. Um, and I could just manually, that's maybe how I could deploy it locally. Let's not get too crazy with it, but this I would run locally. It would, S uh, I mean, I still need to commit, but it would SSH into our machine, get pull it, assuming everything worked right and then we would docker down docker up run it all run these commands and then back out i don't think i'm going to get this working the way i want it to with you all kind of sitting here watching me because there are a few other commands that have to be passed in like the arguments for the git pull um which i don't really want to codify into here but yeah that's how i would probably get this all down to a single command on a git push 
I love it though. I like talking about it. Ah. All right, cool. That's right. We did do that. All right, cool. So we've updated the allowed hosts. We've restarted the Postgres and API containers. It should be good. Let's uh, let's see if it's actually up there and running. Let's let's run this one more time. Send. Hey, look at that. We hit our EC2 instance. Is it working as intended? Oh no. Let's throw some JSON in there. Mm. Oh, what's this saying? How did I mess it up, Charles? Uh, let me see here. Sorry, I was in the process of running mine on another screen. Uh, You're playing video games, I bet. No. Uh, let's see. Your old doesn't end with a slash. You have to append the slash set. Um, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm... It just looks like the format of your endpoint that you use was incorrect. If I'm reading that correctly. Yeah, you're right. Okay, here, 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 here. That's the easy part. Slow pitch. And the trailing slash. Okay. I don't have a trailing slash. This is very conventional. Um, if it's a collective, it should end in a slash. Check it out. Sometimes you can make your API smart enough that it doesn't care about that. Uh, notice this is kind of distracting, but also um, helpful. Uh, the URL doesn't end in a slash, and you have a pen slash set. I have it set? Oh, Django can't redirect to the slash URL while maintaining post data. Interesting. Mm, okay. Yeah, Django doesn't like it. So we need to end in a uh, trailing slash. That's all that's saying. This is common. This is not a, oh, that's stupid. This is how it works. Uh, we can create a uh, another line name. Uh, swing, swing, ink, ink. It's going to be dark. Black grapes. It's going to be terrible. Um, I don't know my varietals. Chard, 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 chardonnay, chard. Bad. Very bad. Hey, check it out. Um, so I posted two. Let's perform a get request. We should get a list of them because this is the collective. We're not looking for a single one. And we did. We got Fox Rot, we got Squid Ink. I ought to be able to perform a put request. Let's change uh, ID to Squid Ink. Uh, let's update it to actually, I like it now. Send that, looks good, result. Squid Ink updated. I like that. That's a helpful message. A more helpful message would be to show the field it updated, but whatever. Perform a uh, an old get request. And I know I'm messing with these and jacking with this. Insomnia does actually let you save these commands, so I could just click them over here. Uh, I'm going to get rid of these because these are for a future class. But that looks like a pretty useful one, huh? Get this one more time. Ah, oh, what did I do? So that still works. Now it's saved as get wines. We could, uh, you know, create a new one. Get wine. Probably call this something like wine detail. Create, be the same thing. Uh, except we would, you know, put a one there. 
So yeah, that is what it wants. All right, cool. So I can tap between these two to get different things. We can update them to gets, puts, posts. Doesn't matter. That's how Insomni works. Real easy. I dig it. Did we, did we test delete yet? Let's uh, delete. No body response. Don't like that. Sure looks like it worked, though. We deleted the first line. We're down to squid ink. Still has an idea of two. Any questions? A little sloppy uh, stick in the landing there, but we did get a little off topic as well. If you have questions and need to look over it again, I'll have this uh, video posted real soon. However, uh, Chad's video from last cohort is a lot more concise than mine. Um, but he's a lot more concise of a person than I am. So if there's no more questions, stop sharing.